Okay, so as you may already be aware, the pineal gland has garnered a lot of attention and a lot of focus over recent years as the physical representation of our third eye. It's what allows us to have uh, certain visions, it's what allows us to have dream experiences, it's what a, a, a enables us to cultivate our psychic abilities. Uh, it's really recognized as an essential organ in developing our, our consciousness and the evolution of our consciousness. Now the pineal gland produces a very concentrated amount of DMT. It does that during the dreaming phase of our sleep. It does that at other times when we may ingest certain substances like ayahuasca. And it also apparently produces an absolute bucket load of DMT right at the moment of death. So all of these reasons are just some of the reasons why the pineal gland has become regarded as, you know, a, a critically important component in the realization of our true potential and, you know, a, a gateway to our spiritual evolution. But in truth, there really is a number of equally important, albeit maybe slightly less glamorous reasons why we want to nourish and heal and activate the pineal gland because there's been a lot of interest for people wanting to decalcify the pineal gland and activate the pineal gland for spiritual purposes alone. So we're going to have a look at that and also some of the other reasons why we really need to focus on nurturing the pineal gland. But really in this video I wanted to take a slightly different angle than you know other people that I've seen that have discussed this subject and discuss the importance of the nutrient melanin and how that's actually really the, the pretty much the main macronutrient required by the pineal gland to function optimally and how chaga mushroom is actually the richest most concentrated source of melanin that we know of in the natural world. So it's probably a good idea to just have a quick look at what melanin actually is. Now it's a very deeply pigmented molecule that pervades throughout pretty much almost all biological life on this planet. I think spiders are actually the only organism that we've ever discovered to not contain any melanin. Now it really persists throughout the whole human body, has many different functions, but melanin is really what gives us the color and the tone of our skin and our hair and the iris in our eyes. And we could say that um, on a very extreme end of that spectrum, if someone had a very severe deficiency in melanin, it would give rise to the condition of albinism. So you would, you know, have an albino person that really didn't have any real pigmentation to their skin, to their hair, and, you know, the iris in their eyes would be kind of pink, and obviously this is the same for the animal kingdom as well. So aside from just that, melanin really diffracts and diffuses 99% of all ultraviolet radiation that we're exposed to. So it's a very, very powerful antioxidant and it's really protecting the integrity of our cells and the, you know, the, the nucleic DNA within our cells. So it's actually a very genoprotective substance that's inhibiting the potential mutation of our DNA. So melanin is created in the body by cells called melanocytes and the macronutrient involved in this production process is the amino acid tyrosine. Now this can be quite a metabolically demanding process and if we are not able to produce melanin in enough quantity and in sufficient quantity and in enough of good quality as well then there can be certain abnormalities of melanin within the body. So an extreme example of that would be, you know, I, I guess an obvious example of that would be malignant tumors that could surface like the skin cancer melanoma and you know there's a lot of diet and lifestyle factors that come into play here so if you're just eating like shit just eating processed garbage genetically modified food if you have a sedentary lifestyle if you've got a really toxic lifestyle you know you're really stressed out there's all of these kind of diet and lifestyle factors that could definitely uh, throw a real spanner in the works and really inhibit our ability to manufacture and produce enough melanin in enough quality. And this is really, really important because melanin is a very key component in the optimal functioning of the central nervous system. You can find it very active in a number of different parts of the brain, not least the pineal gland. The pineal gland is very, very hungry for melanin. But aside from all of the, the kind of spiritual properties that we mentioned, you know, the pineal gland is very much responsible for 
regulating our circadian rhythm, so it's really what is connecting us to the biorhythm of the Earth, it's what's connecting us to the natural cycles of the cosmos, so the pineal gland is kind of acting as a gateway between these two aspects of our reality, it's a gateway between heaven and Earth. Now, it's really regulating the quality and the duration of our sleep and all of the healing and repair mechanisms that go with that. And it does that through the production of the very powerful antioxidant deep sleep hormone, melatonin. Now, melatonin is released by the pineal gland in the presence of darkness and in the absence of ultraviolet light. And if you remember, we said that melanin is actually responsible for really protecting us and shielding us from 99% of all ultraviolet radiation. So we can see that the pineal gland's ability to produce melatonin, enhance our sleep, enhance our healing and repair and regulate our circadian rhythm is really heavily dependent on us actually having enough bioactive, bioavailable melanin for the pineal gland to be fed, you know, we need to be feeding this melanin fuel to the pineal gland in order for it to carry out these essential functions. Now the pineal gland, you know, lesser known properties of it is that it does actually regulate a number of different adrenal functions, so it is integral and very closely tied into our stress fight or flight mechanism, and it's also what gives us the drive, a kind of sexual drive to procreate and what gives us a lot of our reproductive force so uh, you know the pineal gland is so so important for so many more reasons than just a, a kind of spiritual third eye alone even though that is a very important aspect of it but if it's not being fed enough melanin then we can see all of these things will just begin to fall down like a house of cards so ultimately you know, we can't just focus on the pineal gland exclusively if we want to decalcify it and heal it and nourish it and activate it. It really needs to be part of an overall long-term strategy that addresses all of those aforementioned diet and lifestyle factors in a holistic protocol. So, you know, there is no magic bullet. There's no one way that we can just decalcify the pineal gland alone and become a, an awakened master overnight. But there are certain substances that will feed directly into the pineal gland and nourish it and activate it on many levels and actually really protect the integrity of it. And one of those substances is chaga mushroom. Now you can see the outer skin of chaga is actually very, very dark in contrast to its, you know, the inner body of it is actually a completely different color, completely different texture, completely different medicinal properties, but the outside skin is actually very, very dark and really quite brittle. And that's all the melanin. That's where chaga is concentrating all of this melanin. Now, chaga has a number of different melanin compounds, and all of them are chemically very similar or really almost identical to the melanins that we use in the human body. So this is absolutely a kind of pre-prepared, totally bioavailable source of very active melanin. It's the most concentrated source of bioavailable melanin that has ever been discovered. So this is a primary pineal gland, endocrine gland nutrient in that regard. Now, chug has got a vast array of other health benefits that really would play into this. It's one of the top adaptogens. It's a very powerful immune modulator, so it's re-educating and enhancing immunity. It's actually a very anti-parasitic substance as well, so it's going to address things like calcium-forming nanobacteria, which are probably the biggest component to consider in calcification of anywhere in the body, including the pineal gland. So there's a number of reasons why chaga is, in my opinion, one of the top substances that we can be ingesting consistently over the long term as part of an overall holistic strategy to feed and nourish and heal and decalcify and activate the pineal gland. Chaga mushroom really is top of that list in my opinion.